All right, thank you for joining us this afternoon. We are the UW Stout Safety and Security Expansion Capstone Project. My name is Eric Krause. I'm Olga Nguyesma. I'm Andrew Somatic. And I'm Caleb Bolte. We're also joined by Omar today, who's gonna to introduce himself a little bit uh, in just a minute. Um, we are all final semester seniors here in the CNIT program, as well as Holga and myself working in the telecommunications and networking department here on campus. So we have a little more hands-on experience with the infrastructure here. So, why are we here? We are here to help make Stout a better place to live, learn, and work. So, now Omar's gonna lead us in. To, uh, so, a little story behind this uh, capstone project. Uh, the uh, sad incident happened last year. Most of the students know, but at the visitor don't. Uh, the death of uh, one of our fellow students uh, on Halloween. And it was a long time to be processed to catch the, the guy who did it. And a lot of question was, where is the cameras and all that. And uh, after a while, I was responsible of a little leftover of money donation. And I went to the police, uh, the chief of police. I had a sitting with him so I can get to be uh, donated through cameras or do some more cameras on campus. And from there, uh, they explained more for me. I got it back to Holly. And we got to help the police station here in uh, Stout for hopefully implementing uh, cameras around campus. And here, that's how we get to this point, and I will turn it back to the guys over here. Go ahead. So if we're trying to make Stout a safer place, we first have to identify that there is a problem on campus. So this slide up here essentially is showing the different crime events that have occurred throughout the last four years that our group has been here. Us, this is burglary, theft, criminal damage. And it's just showing the actual events that occurred on campus. Along with what's wrong, or what's a problem, we have to identify what's working well. Uh, we have the UW, the UW Stout Police patrolling. Um, they can't be everywhere all the time, though. Uh, that's just unrealistic. Uh, along with this, there is the campus alert system. Uh, that's more for after the fact when events occur. And then finally, there are minimal exterior security cameras. So speaking of those minimal exterior security cameras, really on South Campus, we only have four exterior security cameras behind Harvey Hall here. Well, it's not really bad to have security cameras here. They don't really cover a lot of the incident prone and highly trafficked areas we have here on campus. As you can see, we are lacking in this area. As far as our other existing infrastructure, we have 112 cameras that are managed by the Student Life Services Department here at Stout. That's like in areas like the dorm lobbies and stairways there. Uh, and Price Commons. We also have 25 cameras that are managed by the Telecom and Networking Department, and those are in other academic uh, buildings. And most of those are all indoors, except for the four I mentioned and a couple on North Campus that are at exterior. Uh, we are going to be using the Video Insight video management software. The police are currently using this right now. It allows them to view security footage on their phones, in their tap, on their uh, laptops, in their cars, on their desktops, etc. And it's a really great system, easy to use, and they like it a lot. So we're going to continue using that forward. Uh, we have both, have both Axis and Panasonic cameras here on campus. Uh, the Panasonic cameras are a little bit older and are going to be phased out here pretty soon. And so we're going to continue forth with Axis cameras as they're the better option. Uh, we are not really going to be addressing North Campus in our expansion because it is already sufficiently covered. There are a, lot, there are a few cameras outdoors there that have already been used to uh, catch some criminals and have uh, been very effective in the past, so we don't need to address that any further. All right, like Caleb said, one of the biggest reasons why we choose to implement security cameras on campus is because it has proven to be effective in the past. Um, for instance, we had a, a according to a Think Advisor that published an article, research has shown that actual video recording of an individual perpetrating a crime is a lot more reliable in court than eyewitness of this account. And this has proven to be true here at Stop. We have two cases here that happened in, on campus, like just two of the many cases that Karen has helped us solve. The burglary that happened in Hoblet Hall, where, where two individuals entering the residential areas and enter room by room and sitting in electronics. We had uh, video footages of two, two individuals, and Stout Police has posted two screenshots on the Wisconsin Crime Network, and within less than an hour, this, these two individuals were positively identified. And be, as, as a result of that, they were able to link them with 24 items that were recovered that was stolen from UW Eau Claire, UW Stout, as well as residential areas as well. Um, and also in the North Hall, we had a battery case that happened where the only, the only evidence that the Stout Police had was the security camera footage. And based on that, the judge issued a search warrant, and this individual was captured all the way in North Dakota State. 
So what those two cases have in common is that the people that come here to commit crime, they're not even part of the stealth community. And so that's why we're trying to help implement this security system to help um, catch those people. On the other hand, we have many cases that happen, just like um, Omar explained earlier, besides Hussein case, and we have many other cases that happened that until today, those cases were never closed and we never um, bring anybody in court. For instance, we had 30 cases of tire slashing that happened on campus in 2014. We had a, a case of sexual assault that happened near Jarvis Hall last September. We had a case of um, battery that happened in the administration, near the administration building, as well as one that happened inside the financial aid. Until today, we have nobody in, in, in custody. And one of the reasons why we identified this position, those people basically, the way it happened, if we had if the, the comprehensive security camera footage, we would have catched those individuals. And as much as we're focusing on catching criminals after the crime happened, we, we also would like to prevent things from happening like that. The security cameras would also use as a deterrent from preventing crime from happening. It's hard to put a hard number on how many crimes that security cameras help deter, but, but let's face it, for instance, I, I'm guilty of this. When, when I'm driving down the freeway and I see a squad car in the center lane, what I think immediately to myself, even if I had my speed limit, my uh, cruise control on, I immediately look at my speedometer. Okay, just a disclaimer for the stop police, not that I ever go over the speed limit, of course. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is, it's effective when people walk in the place and they see security cameras, the first thing they think about their behavior before they do something stupid. So. Now you guys see that we have a clear need for additional cameras, so what are we gonna do about that? We plan on implementing network cameras, which have a few fe great features just in general. So the first of those is flexibility. So all of the network cameras that we plan on using are powered over ethernet, so they can be mounted anywhere we have network access um, and powered that way. We don't need to run additional power cables or anything along those lines. Um, along with that comes the remote access that Caleb had talked about uh, a bit earlier. So the police can view these from tablets, laptops, etc., to get to the footage when they need to. Uh, additionally, uh, it comes with great security and encryption, so all of this uh, video footage is stored here on campus. It doesn't go to an off-site data center or anything like that. Um, and we also have administrative procedures in place for who can view this footage. So the police have access to it, of course, um, but beyond that, anyone that wants access to this footage needs to go through both the police and the campus camera committee. So this isn't just openly available to anyone. Now, a little more specifics about the cameras themselves that we plan on using. Um, there are these access models. The model number itself is not important, but what is important is the LVE at the end. So the L stands for low light functionality, which I'll go into more details about in just a minute. Uh, the V stands for vandal resistant, which is a great feature to have on a college campus. We don't want to have to worry about people busting these cameras or anything like that. The E uh, stands for environmental. Uh, again, a great feature, especially in Wisconsin. Um, these will withstand temperatures down to negative 40 degrees. They won't fog or frost up the dome or anything like that. They also feature an SD card slot for failover recording. So as I'm sure everyone that's been on campus knows, we've had some network outages within the past year. This is something we don't really have want to worry about when it comes to security cameras. So they will store this footage locally, and when the network comes back up, it'll seamlessly integrate with the uh, past footage that we've already captured. So the infrared for night recording ties in with that L and the LVE. Uh, this basically gives the cameras night vision. They can see in the dark and, and no light at all. Uh, really great because some of the areas that we are placing these cameras don't have external lighting available and without this would only really be usable during the daytime. Uh, they also feature pan tilt and optical zoom so this all ties in with the flexibility of network cameras I had mentioned earlier. These can be mounted in one place and then from there kind of adjusted to get the exact viewing angle we want. Um, the optical zoom also works very well because we can zoom in to get the exact details we want uh, before the fact. So a good example of this is if we want to monitor the um, entrance of a parking lot for license plate numbers to see who's coming and going, we can zoom in directly at that spot. Uh, they also feature digital zoom, which makes this high resolution feature very important because this is something that we can do after the fact and try to get more details from already captured footage. So showing off some of the technologies these cameras include, uh, obviously the daylight picture, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, for low light, that uses high dynamic range that these cameras include. Uh, basically allows you to be able to catch details about an individual who would be there, uh, the type of clothing they're wearing, even in a low light scenario. Um, 
Now in terms of no light, that would be involving the infrared technology. So there's infrared lights on these cameras. So even in the darkest of places, you can see details about the individual, who's there, if there were cars, that kind of thing. Um, so it's really important that we have these in these cameras. And then um, this is one of the actual cameras on North Campus. We talk about um, sufficient coverage up there, and this is an example of that. Um, you can see a wide range of things up there. Uh, it would be nice if we could zoom in on the picture, get a little clearer image of that sign. Uh, so this is showing off that optical zoom. You would position a camera, obviously not facing at a sign, that doesn't do much for you, but you would have it facing, uh, checking license plates and things like that. So now you're probably wondering, you know, where are we putting these cameras? Well, we've worked with the police department, namely uh, Chief of Police Jason Spetz, to identify the highest priority areas and put those in the first phase and have consequent areas being of less importance and so on. Um, so another reason we're splitting these into three phases is because we don't really expect to get the money for this all at one time, so we want to ease the financial burden and spread it out over time. So now I'm showing you the first phase. Um, this is the courtyard uh, by Bowman Hall there. You can see Bowman. We have two cameras on Bowman Hall, one facing down to the south campus, one facing kind of into the courtyard, and one on the bank building here kind of facing towards downtown. This is an absolutely critical area because you know, people, this is a really high traffic area, especially at night, but coming back from the bars and whatnot, and uh, Chief of Police has, has identified this as being the number one priority area. You know, Hogan mentioned earlier a battery case that happened in early March, and that happened right in this courtyard here. And you know, the parents of that victim asked right away, is do we have any security camera footage? And we were forced to say no, because we do not have this area covered at this time. So absolutely critical area. Also a part of phase one is this hut to the southeast of the track that we have here at Stout. There's a, tra a trail here that leads up to the tennis courts, and uh, in the summertime it gets kind of overgrown and it's very uh, prone for kind of assault. A lot of people on campus, a lot of groups are really worried about this area and don't really feel safe walking through there, especially at night. So we want to have camera footage there to cover this area uh, and make sure we have those details covered. We also have a camera facing the other way just to catch more details about an individual as they walk by. Also a very important area. Now we're going to move on to phase two. Immediately after the completion of phase one, as budget allow, we'll move on to phase two. And this area right here on the top left corner of the screen, uh, those are places where most of our freshmen live in the residence hall. And as you can see, there's a lot of cross traffic going on here either at night or during the day. And that would be one of the high potential area that we had in Tribe Stock Police. And this first security camera facing lap 14 will be on the Vocational Rehabilitation Building. And we have two facing 10th Street and also the hallway going down uh, where all the students travel the lap. And also, as I talked earlier, this is the general area behind Jarvis Hallway that sexual assault case took place. And we have two security cameras covering the, the parking lot area and the walkway that goes in front of campus as well. And down with that, we'll move on to phase three. We have six security cameras on phase three. And three of them, again, that's a continuation of that uh, freshman area residence hall called going down south of it. And we have three security cameras covering those high uh, traffic areas as well. And the MSC is a famous place for students to go and have lunch and eat and study at night. And because of that, there's a lot of traffic that goes around it. We have one, for instance, when they park their car in lot 29 and then walk back to, to the MSC. And we have one security camera covering the, the courtyard as well as facing lot 29 on, on, on full leg out the building. And last one on phase three would be on top of the university service building, which is also where Stout Police is located. And there's a security camera covering this parking lot based on the fire department. We have identified based on the nature of the business, like on Main Street over there, there's a lot of at night people use this parking space as a free parking because it's free um, about a certain time. And there's a lot of shenanigans that happen, especially in this particular area. So, <laughs> so it's important that we, we cover this. And this is kind of a bird's eye view of the whole, uh, after the all phase three are uh, implemented, all three phases, and it's color coded, like phase one, phase two, phase three. Now, as you look at it, you may wonder, like, it doesn't look like comprehensive, like all the campuses are not covered. But as we talked about earlier, we sat down with staff police and look at the strategic location to place the security cameras based on how and when people travel. So we know if someone goes from point A to point B, they have to point C, they have to go via point B. And Especially, we, sometimes it depends on what we're looking for, if looking at facial recognition or if you're just looking at a pattern, how people travel. So that's how we implement the security cameras. So now that you guys have seen where we plan on implementing these cameras, I'm sure you're curious about the cost. Um, I'm not going to go through every uh, price in this sheet, but what I'm going to go through is the distinction of where these cameras are mounted because that is where uh, 
makes the biggest difference. So depending on the building uh, the cameras are mounted, they can be managed by either telecom and networking or student life services. So telecommunications and networking mounted buildings incur a uh, yearly cost of $360. That covers the licensing for the software, uh, the storage on the telecom and networking servers, as well as the eventual replacement of these cameras after seven years. Now opposed to that is student life services managed cameras. Uh, these are going to be $159 as a one-time cost, so that covers the Video Insight software, a uh, lifetime upgrades for that software, as well as support, uh, but this does not cover any eventual replacement of those cameras, and those are up to the department themselves uh, to take care of later down the line. So now you can see the budget for each uh, phase of the project, as well as total. So we're looking at roughly $44,000 in total, uh, with a recurring cost of roughly $4,000 a year. So along with that, uh, it's good to know how long this will take. So each phase is roughly estimated to take around 16 days. Uh, the reason phase one is estimated to take 17 is because of that hut down by the track and field. So that hut comes with a special set of networking circumstances. Uh, there isn't power down there for internet access, uh, so we're actually going to be using a wireless receiver down there. Um, so we allotted an extra day for that. Uh, so now we're going to move on to the live demo. Caleb's going to be demonstrating this software. We only have two cameras. This is uh, just a proof of concept. Um, we would be implementing cameras into an existing network already. Uh, so this is just a nice view outside of Frickland. There's a pretty bad player, but this would be mounted outside of Frickland in the future. Um, so now, Caleb, if you wouldn't mind going to the lab, just checking to see what's going on in there. Uh, you can see some students working. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why is shiftily running. Um, <laughs> not exactly sure what's going on here, but uh, uh, Holly will get back to it. Oh, um, so it's a good thing we have security cameras. If someone were to come in and steal a monitor, like they did for Holly, uh, we would be able to identify that individual. So that concludes our live demo. It's pretty short, but uh, these would be implemented into something that already exists. Hi. Um, we spent a lot of hours on this project, starting since uh, the end of January, and started out basically as doing research, because this is doing a lot of research in, to start with, because this is kind of actual, an actual implementation that will happen. It's not a fictitious project where you could either win the data, or you know, we have to find answers and contact different departments, mid security policies and everything. <coughs> we spent a lot of time on that as well, and we have a spike over here, because we had to uh, come up with a comprehensive solution to present to the SSA as well, which is this uh, Stop Student Association, to get their approval because we're dealing with privacy and everything like that. We have to make sure we, we, we spend a lot of time trying to meet and meet with people. So we spent about 311 hours um, working on this project throughout the semester. And of course, some of that is you know spent when we get sidetracked to discuss technology and politics sometimes. So, all part of it. so uh, over the course of the semester, you know, we definitely had a few pickups and learned a few lessons along the way. Me, my, uh, personally, myself, like in a lot of other classes, you give a presentation, you might get some feedback, but that's kind of the end of it right here. We've given this presentation so many times, gotten so much great feedback, we've been to incorporate back into our product to make it the superior version of this today. And so I really value that, and uh, I think it was a valuable experience. And following along with that, uh, feedback is important too, because generally when you're working on something, uh, you get a narrow scope. You're looking at the details, you're staring at something over and over. So when presenting to the SSA or to our class for feedback, it's nice to get that different perspective that you might have been lacking. So speaking of those different groups Andrew mentioned, uh, one, one thing that's really great is talking to them in person. Uh, we had to deal with a lot of groups both within and outside of campus, and we learned how easy it is for people to ignore both emails and phone calls. Uh, so at that point we just kind of had to go down to their office and say, hey, we are waiting on this information. And um, when we did that, we got help right away, if not the next day, and could continue with our project. Yeah, um, to continue with what Eric said, team collaboration was a big one because we all have classes, different schedules, so it wasn't always easy for us to be uh, to, to meet together and so we had to rely on each other to take our responsibility, to take our part and do it, and then come back and put it all together like it was one person that did it. And for me especially, time management was a big one because I can't remember the last time I had a semester that busy with other classes and for all of us pretty much and other classes, work and, and, and family as a I'm a non-traditional student, and I'm married, and I have my beautiful wife back there. So I had to, between time and work schedule and everything, so it was really important for me, and this project was high priority to manage my time. 
So I want to thank you guys all for coming here. You know, this project means a lot to us. Um, we are getting a grade for it, it is for a class, but really the real reason we're doing it is because we want to make Stout a safer place for you know, our staff, students, and faculty to live, learn, and work. So once again, thank you, and we'll be happy to answer any questions you guys might have about the project. Go ahead and find them there. Uh, there was cost, uh, considerations for the server cost for usage and storage over time. The idea of our cameras is going to take more cost and power to convert video and more storage. Yep, so for that storage and processing power, um, that again goes to the difference between the student life services and telecom and networking. So for telecom and networking, that included the storage as well. Um, and they kind of budget out their own servers. They rent out the storage, um, nothing else. They take care of that. Um, Student Life Services has indicated that the proposed cameras we have that will be mounted on their building will not add any requirements. They will be more than, help, uh, more than available to cover what we are proposing. Uh, down the line, it's certainly going to be an issue. Uh, but for our project, it was not. Anyone else? Yeah, go ahead. So the groups before you talked about a lot of power outages on campus. <laughs> you, uh, you considered what kind of effect that would have on the camera coverage? Yeah, Eric mentioned that um, what it is, we have those security cameras that capability they have a SD card in, in the camera itself. So in the case of power goes out, it, it stored the, the footages locally until the power comes back up and then just transfer it back to the server. Well, that's a network outage, but what about a power outage? Oh, power, sorry. <laughs> I look at it in uh, uh, Yes, but... Like, are the switches protected with the UPS to keep them running? Oh, yeah, we have our network is... Yeah, we have UPS on our network. Okay. <laughs> yep. So the camera would still run? Yeah, it would still continue, because they're, they're POE. Oh, yeah, well, of course, okay. next will help in that yeah, case. So we do have UPS. Time, you look at the number of watts the camera dropped out? It's something yeah. I consider. Definitely be considered. Right. We'll consider it for sure. Yep. Any other questions? No? Well, uh, thank you guys for coming once again.